A little different kind of intro here today, huh? It's really hard for us to look back at our work and like kind of find the lessons. This video you're about to watch is about self-revision. Also, um, just so you guys are aware, for those of you who are keeping up with these videos, you're supposed to watch these in a certain order. And so if you watch them out of order, it's not really gonna make sense. Don't know if that's like the best thing for YouTube, but if you do wanna watch this whole Nike thing, it's a video editing course. I try to give it context so you can watch it out of order, but sometimes it doesn't work like that. So yeah, let's get into the video. Here are my three tips to keep in mind for self-revision. Well, like three and a half, there's a two-parter, so here we go. Number one is emotion. This is the most powerful tool when storytelling. In all of my years of editing, and even from the mind of one of the greatest editors on the planet, Walter Murch, the emotion of your story should be preserved at all costs. Like preserving the emotion in your cut results in a better understanding of the story. If you can properly preserve the correct emotion in a piece of content, whether it's film, commercial, or social media, the audience is subconsciously willing to forgive any other problems or inconveniences consistencies in that piece of content, including the next two important tips I'm gonna give you. Tip number two when self-revising is to keep your story in mind. You need to have a clear three-act structure. The three-act structure is a classic plot structure used by every single film, TV show, commercial, and even TikTok. Every single piece of content has a beginning, a middle, and an end, also known as act one, two, and three. You can verify that you have a clear beginning, middle, and end by using the three-act structure. In act one, is there a clear question for our hero to answer, yes or no? In act two, is our hero doing something about the question, yes or no? In act three, has our hero answered the question, yes or no? If you answered no to any of those, go back and switch out and trim up shots so that it's clear and not clear to our character, but clear to you, the editor. In act one, we show our hero questioning his ability. Can I do this? In this case, the question is asked internally. And as the editor, we show this in five shots. He checks the track, checks his shoes, and literally nods to himself. By nodding yes, we can validate as the editor that a question was asked. In act two, our hero attempts to answer himself by warming up. We show this in eight shots. He stretches, he jumps in place, he swipes his foot, and he gets into his starting position. In act three, our hero has answered the question, I did it. We show this in one shot. He looks up at the camera and smiles. He is confident he can do this. And here's the sweetener. Why was he able to do that? Because Nike. The third thing to keep in mind when self-revising is your pacing. Pacing happens within the length of each shot. By determining the length of each shot, the editor is able to guide the viewer's emotional response to any scene. For example, very quick cuts suggest excitement or intensity. On the other hand, slower paced cuts are more thoughtful and relaxed. Where would a close-up be most powerful? Where would a wide shot be most powerful? And which shots provide the most exposition or development of character? This is a self-awareness exercise. You need to be aware of the emotional impact of certain shots and be aware of your emotional state as you watch your cut. On top of visual information, audible information is just as important. How can the sounds around our character be used to move the story forward or used to transition from one shot to the next? For example, in comedy and horror films, a lot of these audible cues are based on the elements of surprise. How can you use audio to move the story forward? An example of this would be using a low pass filter on the sound of the car as we looked at the tracks on the ground. We immediately answer the question of the tracks and simultaneously, we don't give the audience a chance to ruin the surprise. This subconsciously plants a seed in the viewer's brain that will come to fruition at the end of the commercial when the car pulls up. Whenever you have an opportunity to add to the overall story, both visually and audibly, do it. That's where you place your creativity. Now this part is three and a half because pacing and rhythm kind of go hand in hand. In order for you to have rhythm in your cut, the length of the shots should vary. The audience is smart and they're able to sense abrupt transitions, audio pops, and even poor framing. Editing should appear seamless. So when something sticks out, it brings down the video as a whole. One of the best ways to judge rhythm is through intuition. And your intuition to judge rhythm comes with time. But some things to keep in mind as you're correcting for proper rhythm is to ask yourself, where does it feel slow? Where does it feel fast? Why does it feel slow or fast? If you can't pinpoint a specific spot, pay attention to yourself when you look away from the video or check your phone or pause the video without reason. Pay attention to those moments and then ask yourself why. Talk out loud, write words on paper. You need to find all of the spots in the timeline that make you yourself feel uneasy. You're gonna move video layers, you're gonna move audio layers. You may even be reworking some sound design and music. This is a revision period and these revisions are fueled by you. The self-revision process will always rely on your perception of your work, your point of view, because that's what makes your work, your work. I made that video like <clears throat> two, three years ago maybe for when I launched the course and I never released it to the public, but after watching it back, I th it's okay. I don't think it's like great. I think there's a lot of <laughs> room for improvement, obviously. 
I don't know. I think I'll remake the video maybe a little bit later because I do think there is something to revision, like knowing how to revise. But um, did you get value out of that? <laughs> Was that like actually helpful? Uh, let me know because I am going to continue to release this course, but I'm releasing it all now kind of with the foresight of like three years of experience. So <laughs> we'll see how it looks. But if you do want to watch this whole thing from start to finish, if you're on a computer, there's going to be a box right here. Just click it. If you're on the phone, there's going to be a link in the description. Click that.